Hello, lovers of Umbraco CMS that are also on YouTube. My name is John, and in this video, you're going to learn all about the Umbraco events pipeline. Specifically, you're going to learn how you can hook into this pipeline so you can trigger some custom code when certain key actions occur within the CMS. Now, this is a video on Umbraco v9. And one of the first things I should say is that events within Umbraco v9 have been renamed and rebranded to notifications. Now, I'm not 100% sure why they've called it notifications. However, as you know, a developer of 20 years who's done event-driven architecture, the term events to me is probably a bit more intuitive. So let's walk through this whole process. So when a content editor logs into the Umbraco backend, they're going to be performing certain actions. So they're going to be creating pages, publishing pages. Hey, they may go crazy and delete a page. Now, whenever these actions are performed, in the background, certain events are going to get triggered. Now, out of the box, Umbraco basically hooks into these events, and then this is how things get published, saved, all that sort of stuff. Now, as a developer, it's possible and fairly easy for you to hook into these events and get some custom code of your design to run as well. So this is what we're going to be doing in this video. Now, some examples of why you might want to create events within Umbraco might include like invalidation. So let's say that you're doing a page save. You might want to add some validation that prevents the page from saving until you know some key data or something like that exists on that page. You might want to prevent certain document types from being deleted. So let's say you have a settings page on the delete command or events, you might want to stop that page from being deleted. Or for example, let's say that on publish, you might want to re-trigger the internal search index, search index, or you might want to include some custom data into it. So there's loads and loads of reasons why you want, why want to hook into the events pipeline. So in today, you're gonna to learn everything that you need to know in order to start doing it yourself. Now, if you haven't come across one of my videos before, we are midway through a season about how to build a kick-ass website using Umbraco V9. So currently we are on video nine in the series. So if you're trying to learn Umbraco, I 100% recommend smashing the subscribe button so you don't lose the content. You can see the future episodes and you can be an absolute Umbraco badass. Now, in this season, we're actually building a small plugin. So our mini project is to create a backend extension. So this extension will show all the pages which have been saved and scheduled in descending order so that when a content editor logs into the backend, they have a quick reference point on all the content items that they need to work on. So in order to get this to work, what we need to do in today's video is hook into the save events and on save, we're going to add an additional property that's going to give us a date. Now, the reason why we're doing this is that when you say save an item within the back end, it's not going to have a scheduled or published date. Now, if you schedule an item within CMS, it's going to have a date. However, it's going to live within the content schedule, scheduled event array property on the iContent object. So if we want to create this back end extension and make it super simple, what we need is just this one date that we can filter within our search index. So that is the notification that we'll be building today. If that sounds kick-ass to you, carry on watching. If not, just hit the subscribe button and on your way. So assume you've done that, let's start looking at notification. All the code that you'll be seeing in today's tutorial is going to be added within my Umbraco V9 starter kit. Now this starter kit is free for you to download, safe and source, so you can have a look, play around, do what you want. So if you want to access this code, you don't want to try and just tippy tappy some code off the screen, which is annoying, just simply head over to my GitHub, which is the johndjones.com, there's no H in my name. As you'll see, pinned on the start page, we have Umbraco V9 starter kit, 14 absolute legends of Stardip. I recommend you start as well, so you can be a badass. And then yeah, you know how GitHub works. Go in there, clone away, do what you want. Now, when it comes to notifications within Umbraco, the first thing that you'll need to do is register something. And this is done through a composer. So as you can see here, I've got a custom class library. In here, I've got a folder called composers, and I've created this custom class called register notifications. So in order to create your own custom composer, simply create a class, implement the iComposer interface, 
this is going to force you to implement this compose method which will give you access to the builder now within builder you're going to get access to add notification handler and basically from here you do a mapping of the events that you want to hook into and the custom class that you want to get triggered when that event happens now within umbraco they are a load of notifications that we can start looking at so let's say we go over to the umbraco cms github page so umbraco cms now if you go to umbraco cms source umbraco core notifications you will see a list of all the notifications that you have access to so you've got things like you know when member does stuff when media does stuff dictionaries moving created content notifications assigned user there is too much to go over in a single video and let's be honest most of these events you'll never want to hook into in general whenever i need to do this i've over i've only ever really cared about saving or uh, publishing so as you can see we've got this composer notification events custom type so in order to create this custom type i've also got this folder called uh, notification handlers and in here we've got this subscribe to content saving notifications call it whatever you want it doesn't make a difference the important thing in here is that you implement from i notification handler and then you also have in a matching type that you want to hook into so again, you create the composer, you do the event you want to hook into and the custom type. And then within the custom type, you basically set it as a notification handler with the type you're interested in. Now, when you do this, you're going to be forced into implementing this handle method. And as you can see, it takes the event type you're interested in as an argument. So this is going to give you access to certain key things. Now, when we're trying to look into the saving events, you're going to get access to this saved entities. So this is basically going to give you access to all the document types that the content editor has actually requested. So if I go into CMS, and what I can do quickly is put a breakpoint here. If I go to CMS, let's go to home, let's add something in, save and publish. You can see that my debugger has been triggered in my saved entities i've got a list and the item within here it's a bit small but hopefully you can see is the home page so this all marries up now in the example that we'll be creating today i'm going to iterate through this collection and let's be honest as you've seen there in most instances it's ever going to be one item and then from here we're going to add in this custom property that i've been talking about now for this extension that I'm going to be creating, and I can actually show you an example of it. So let's go content. So you're gonna be learning how to create this unpublished tutorial list. And from here, you can see that we've got a list of all these unpublished pages. So what we're gonna first do is I'm only going to relate these pages just to my blog pages. So what we can do within our node item is you can access the content type and it's alias so then you can make sure that, you know, by adding in these types of restrictions, that your notification handler is only gonna get registered to the correct document types that you care about. In this instance, if we're trying to save something which isn't a blog, then it's just gonna get returned. Now, in my example, what I need is to add in a custom date. So if I go back here, you can see that if I look in my settings, document types, we've got something called base blog and in here we have got this post date property now what i want to happen is that when people save schedule or publish data within the cms this value gets automatically updated without the content editor having to do anything themselves so let's walk through how this looks so the first thing we do is we use the node get value property and using this we can query any property within the content we're working with so as you can see here, I'm trying to access this post date. And just so you can see, this is just a string resource. So it's just basically saying the property alias, so post type. Now what we're saying is if it's got, if it has not got a date, then we want to ensure that it has got a date. So the first thing I'm gonna do is try and get the published date. So every single time you publish a bit of content, it's gonna have a published date. Now, if it's got a published date, we'll use that. However, 
if it does not have a published date, we're going to try and use the scheduled date. And getting access to the scheduled date is a bit of a faff if I'm honest. So in order to get the scheduled date, and let's go back to CMS. So the scheduled date would be related to, if I went, there we go. So if I clicked on the schedule button, if I start adding values in here and here, this is gonna get populated in that content scheduled property. So as you can see, to get access to it, we've got content schedule, dot full schedule. This is an array, so we want to filter that array and we want to filter it by a first or default and we want the release date or the schedule date. So this long-winded ass bit of code here is gonna give us access to our scheduled date. Then if we don't have a scheduled date, it means that we've only saved the page. So we've got some examples of just bog standard page saving here. So this here hasn't got a scheduled date, it's not published. So this is gonna get a date time now. And basically, once we've ensured that this post date value here has got something, you can then use the set value property and then write that information back to the CMS. And this is basically how we can create one of these notifications. So as you can see here, as soon as I save a type of blog, you can see that our event handler gets called. We're going through the check because it's a blog type. We're gonna see, has it got a published date? It hasn't got a published date. So then we're gonna go through, run some custom logic and then manually and automatically set the post date value in the background. So again, there's loads of different ways why you might, why, might want to do this in your own code base. So yeah, validation is a very usual, uh, circum, um, usual suspect of why you might do this stuff. So I've also got a published notification. Let's run that through, um, through that quickly, just so you've got a good understanding. So again, in our composer, add notification handler, hook into the publish notification, and within our publish notification, we're going to trigger some custom code. Now, I've created a custom bit of code. From here, it needs to implement the I notification handler and the content published notification. Now, in this one, you're gonna also have to implement the handle method. However, in here, you can notice that the type that we're passing in here is different. It's the content publish notification. And from here, we have access not to saved entities. Now we have access to published entities. Now, again, in here, we're doing a check if the entity is equal to our blog page. And if it's not, we're gonna set this property right here, which is called unpublished tutorial equals false. And that is pretty much everything you need to know in order to master notifications within Umbraco CMSs. By now, I'm hoping that you feel like you've mastered Umbraco events. And as we have seen, hooking into the Umbraco event pipeline when you want to create those custom backend extensions isn't anything to be intimidated by. Simply creating that composer and then registering your notification handler, hooking into the event you're interested in with that custom type, and then implementing the iNotification handler interface and implementing that method will allow you to get any custom code of your little mind's desire to run. And the next thing you know, Bob's your uncle's cat's brother, monkey's uncle, sister's girlfriend's cousin's third kid removed, you will have got some notifications up and running within Umbraco. So I hope you have enjoyed this content. And if you have, there's two things you can do, which I'd very much appreciate. First, obviously, if you like Umbraco because you made it this far into the video, smash the subscribe button to learn more about Umbraco V9 goodness. We've got loads of interesting videos coming up. So if you want to learn more about Umbraco, be a legend, hit subscribe. Also, if you want to do me the solidest of solids, please hit the like button. So liking this video does basically two things. First, it helps the video get shown within the YouTube algorithm gods to more people. Also, it tells me that you want to see more Umbraco content on this channel so I can start drilling into more advanced Umbraco topics. Also, I do this Sunday newsletter. It's all about Umbraco CMS development. So basically, if you want to become better at your job and you want to see some interesting links coming into your inbox every Sunday, link is below. 
it's free. You can unsubscribe. There's a little unsubscribe button, so I recommend you do that. Otherwise, I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are. Hope you've got some value out of this video and happy coding.